So we have developed a P4-based plugin uh, for the FDIO. So uh, I would like to present uh, uh, some information about it so that we can have a discussion. Right. <clears throat> so the agenda for this uh, discussion is going to be uh, like this. So initially, we will, uh, I'll just present a brief overview of what exactly P4 is. Right. Then we'll see, uh, see the description of the P4 plugin that we have developed for the FDIO. Um, then I would like to present some of the use cases that we have realized uh, based on this plugin. And then finally, I'll present some packet throughput numbers that we have achieved with this. And then I would also like to show a demo uh, wherein uh, uh, we'll kind of uh, realize one simple use case uh, based on this uh, P4 plugin and then switch the P4 to realize another use case. So let's see how the demo goes. OK, so what exactly is P4? Uh, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the P4, but it is uh, really a, a next generation SDN and uh, evolution over the OpenFlow protocol. Right? So <clears throat> the OpenFlow protocol basically defined a way uh, to program a, a table pipeline in the data plane, right? But the P4 takes the programmability of the data plane to next level. Basically, it allows to specify the entire packet processing of which the table pipeline is only a part. So it allows the entire uh, packet processing to be specified uh, using a high-level language, which is called the P4. Basically, the aim of the language is to make the switch protocol independent. So the entire packet parsing is specified by this language. So unlike OpenFlow, you're not uh, restricted by uh, IP packets, right? So you could, you could specify processing for any type of packet. It's target independent. So basically, once you define uh, your uh, processing blocks, uh, you can write a P4 in P4 uh, packet processing based on that processing blocks. So you need not worry, uh, worry about the target or architecture or, or what it does. So basically, be it ASIC or a soft switch, uh, the P4 is going to remain the same. So you can write a P4 which works on uh, any target. And the next, next uh, point is field reprogrammability. Uh, so basically, a switch that, that supports P4 can be reconfigured in the field. So basically, it could be implementing one use case, and then you could supply it using the same uh, device or the same software. You could supply another P4, which just changes the use case. Right. OK. So basically, this slide gives an overview of uh, the P4 compiler, which is the heart of the entire P4 system. So it just it, it shows what does a P4 compiler do. So there is a P4 program that you supply. The P4 compiler, what it is really going to do is, it's going to generate some files which are going to specify how the control interface and the data plane is going to operate based on the P4, right? So the compilation process is basically uh, going to generate some objects based on the separate P4. It's going to basically pass through the entire P4 file and going to generate uh, object files, okay? So the compilation uh, process for the data plane is split into two parts. One is the core compiler, and another is the device-specific backend file generator. Okay, so for our soft switch, so basically what happens is in these two stages, we basically go through the P4, uh, uh, supplied P4 file, and we generate something called as a, a data path JSON. So the entire P4, uh, uh, contents of the P4 file is converted into a JSON file. And then uh, in the device-specific backend, we generate a combination of a bin file and, and some code. Okay. And the P4 compiler also uh, generates a JSON file which the control plane interface and the applications that are going to interwork with the data plane can both share so that they know, they know how to communicate, right? And the protocol to communicate between the control plane and the data plane is called the P4 runtime, okay? So basically the goal here is to uh, uh, allow people to specify a P4-based uh, packet processing wherein the author writing a P4 uh, script need not worry about the underlying architecture at all. So for example, he need not worry about uh, 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 what kind of uh, uh, hardware blocks are available, what is the thread model and things like that. So he just specifies how to parse the packet and uh, what, are, what, what are the table pipeline, what is the table pipeline and what is the match and action key in each of those pipeline. Okay, so this uh, uh, slide kind of gives uh, an overview of uh, uh, the way we have uh, introduced the P4 plugin uh, into the VPP. Uh, so basically, uh, 
So we have uh, implemented the P4 processing as a as a node inside the VPP, which uh, can be, which 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 basically fits in along with the other uh, nodes. So it becomes pr uh, part of the VPP processing graph, right? So our system provides uh, basically a management interface, control interface, and a high-speed packet interface. Right? The management interface uh, is uh, based on uh, Confit Taylor and we can supply a Yang model to it, and it renders the management interface not bound based on that Yang model. So as part of our compilation, uh, what we do is uh, we kind of uh, generate the P4 info JSON file, which gets fed into the control interface and the application, uh, and that way they are in sync to program table rules into the data plane. So we also supply uh, uh, the data path JSON to both the data path and the management interface, so to allow ma even the management interface to be able to program table rules uh, into the uh, data path. So this is the uh, packet pipeline uh, that we have currently implemented. So it, co it contains a packet parsing stage, a verify checksum stage, a table pipeline stage, a compute checksum stage, and a packet egress stage. So packet parsing stage is a, is a stage where uh, we kind of parse the packet to extract key fields. The key fields can then be used uh, for lookups in the table pipeline, right? And uh, the packet egress block basically applies the packet actions and then uh, makes the final packet and sends it out. So verify checksum can be used to verify uh, the checksum uh, in the ingress packet, and the compute checksum kind of uh, computes the checksum after the packets have been manipulated. So this slide shows uh, the way we have introduced uh, our uh, uh, VPP nodes uh, uh, into the uh, uh, FDIO packet processing graph. So the significant portion here uh, uh, is that uh, we have introduced this in such a way that we can leverage the features provided by the FDIO. So basically, uh, uh, if if the ingress IO if the packets from the ingress IO port have to be directly uh, sent to the P4 processing. So we have a, a graph uh, which can follow that path. Or if it has to be processed as a packet which has come on IP interface or L2 domain, so there are different graphs on the input side uh, to accommodate that. So similarly, after applying the entire P4 parsing, okay, so we can either send the packet out on the interface, if the P4 itself can find out the egress, egress port directly, or we can hand it off to uh, uh, other uh, pr uh, processing nodes like the IP, uh, IP node and uh, the L2 domain nodes. <clears throat> so uh, the next few slides uh, uh, give uh, information about some of the use cases that we have achieved uh, using uh, uh, the, the P4 plugin that we have developed. So this one here is a PPPoE BNG use case, okay, which can basically process uh, PPPoE packets. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, each of the slide is going to show uh, the, the brief, brief description of the use case and also the table pipeline used to realize the use case. So in this particular use case, we basically uh, split the PPPoE BNG into uh, uh, control plane and uh, user plane. Uh, basically the CUPS uh, uh, split is achieved. So the data path uh, uh, here can identify the control plane packet and send to a PPPoE server, which can then run the state machine uh, to support the CPEs. Uh, the customer premises equipments, and the data path packet uh, it follows the pipeline and then is directly sent out. Right. So uh, the significant thing to note here is that each of the use cases are running on the same soft switch, and uh, each time we supply a new P4, so it is going to implement uh, the corresponding use case. Right. So the next use case we realized uh, is a user plane function, uh, basically a uh, uh, FIG, uh, GTP tunneling and detunneling uh, uh, of functionality. So in this case, uh, what happens is uh, 3GPP has defined a PFCP protocol for interworking between the SMF as the session management function and the UPF, which is basically the data plane function. So we have developed a UPF application which basically converts the uh, information received through the PFCP protocol uh, into gRPC calls uh, into the programmable data plane. Okay. So we supply a P4 which basically uh, uh, provides tables uh, that the UPF application is able to program in order to achieve this uh, tunneling and detunneling. So this can process uh, the uplink packets, do detunneling and forward towards the internet, receive downlink packets from the internet and tunnel it and then send towards the UE. Uh, 
so the next uh, use case uh, that uh, that is highlighted is uh, the MEC use case, the edge computing use case. So basically, uh, we have uh, put a node which is a bump in the wire between uh, A node B uh, and the core network, and it can receive uh, GTP tunnel packets, and it can open up the tunnel and uh, offload packets uh, to applications which are uh, basically hosted on the edge. Okay, it, it, it basically, uh, the table pipeline here uh, for the MEC use case basically uh, is somewhat complicated. Uh, it can uh, detunnel a packet, it can remember the tunnel information, and it can offload the packets towards the VMs. And when the VM traffic is returning, based on the five tuple in the packet, it is able to determine if the packet has to be sent towards the E node B or towards the core network side. And uh, based on the direction, it is able to correctly uh, introduce the tunnel back again. So the P4 uh, language specification, uh, the P4 file we were able to extend in order to uh, implement some of the functionalities. For example, uh, this uh, uh, UEIP tables, right? Uh, so the information that is learned into this table has to be exported into something called as the RAN information database in order to extract the UEIP address information. So we are able to extend the P4 specification easily using something called as annotations uh, in order to achieve such functionalities. And uh, similarly, the uh, tunnel mapping tables, right? Uh, so there is a, a RAN information database, which when gets updated, is automatically going to synchronize these tables. <clears throat> the other use case uh, that we, uh, we, we were able to achieve using this program, programmable data plane is a stateless load balancer. Um, so the advantage here is uh, when we uh, put the stateless load balancing at the end of a P4 table pipeline, it basically gives a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, extracting key fields and uh, in specifying which key fields have to be used uh, for load balancing uh, the packets. <clears throat> so the next, uh, the other use case that we have achieved is QoS. Again, the same advantage. Basically, uh, by putting a P4 table pipeline in the front of the QoS actions, so you get uh, uh, a very flexible way to specify uh, uh, how the QoS actions have to be applied on packets because this table pipeline could potentially have table entries having millions of entries. And each one of those entries could have different QoS actions. And these QoS actions are again leveraged from both the DPDK and uh, VPP. Uh, uh, and and this, this example shows basically uh, the power of uh, introducing nodes into VPP because we can leverage the uh, features that are pre-built into the VPP. Okay, uh, these are uh, some of the packet throughput numbers that we have achieved. Uh, this is based on the initial uh, benchmarking uh, with the 256 byte packet. So uh, basically a simple, for simple L3 forwarding use case, we are able to achieve up to 14 GBPS on a on single core, which is basically a Broadwell 2.4 gigahertz core. And uh, a complex use case like uh, uh, MEC, so we are able to achieve up to uh, 11 GBPS of uh, data processing using two cores. Okay, so I have about five minutes left, so I will move, quickly move on to the uh, two demo use cases. So in this demo, uh, I'm going to start uh, three VMs, okay? So the VM2, one of the VMs is going to run the uh, programmable uh, data plane. So initially we'll supply a simple VLAN switch P4, right? So that P4 is a simple one which is going to examine the ingress port, which is port number one, and the VLAN in the packet. And it is going to switch, based on the VLAN, it's going to switch the packets to one of the ports, that is two or three, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll restart the, uh, the data plane uh, with another P4, uh, which is basically a UPF P4, and uh, it will look at, it will basically receive GTPU packets, right? And uh, it can uh, examine the TID in the packet, and then it is going to detunnel the GTPU part of the packet. I mean, remove the GTPU headers, uh, and then send the packet towards port two or port three based on the TID, based on the rules supply. Okay, so let's, uh, Sorry, I got the question regarding your numbers earlier here, but uh, 
Do you want me to answer, ask it now or later? Uh, shall I just finish the demo? And then Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so this is a sample uh, P4 file, uh, basically, which is uh, initially defining the headers that you want to look in the packet. Okay, and then uh, it has a parsing stage uh, where uh, you kind of parse the packet. So here it starts with the Ethernet header and it is going to parse the VLANs and it's going to extract the VLAN to use as a key. And then you have the table pipeline stage, uh, basically where uh, we are looking up uh, one table uh, here. If we find a valid VLAN in the packet, we are going to look up uh, the VLAN table. So this is the VLAN table definition where we have defined the key and the actions to be performed. So the key is uh, ingress port and the VLAN that we have extracted from the packet, right? So we will uh, basically start up So we are launching the uh, uh, VPP with uh, the VLAN switch P4, which I which you just saw. So here, basically, what it has done is uh, uh, yeah. So th th this step here is the compilation step. Basically, uh, we have compiled the P4 program here, and then uh, using the generated JSON file, we have converted into the backend uh, representation where we have generated. Uh, a bin file, which the plugin is going to read and set up the data path, right? And uh, then after starting up the VPP, so once that is generated, we have started up the VPP and we have set up the VPP with the interface uh, information, right? So now we are going to add two rules into the table, so which is going to basically uh, uh, we are just saying that uh, if the key, that is the ingress port and the VLAN, if it is ingress port is 1, VLAN is 10, then uh, send the packet to port number 2. And if the ingress port is 1 and the VLAN is 11, send the packet to port 3. So let's add this. Uh, uh, so let's start the Wireshark captures here. So we are going to start uh, Wireshark on two of the interfaces on the third third VM here. So the VPP is uh, are running on this uh, VM, and uh, we will send the packets from here. So this has sent two packets, one with VLAN 10 and one with VLAN 11. And uh, we can see that uh, they have gone on two different interfaces. Okay. So what we'll do next is uh, we'll see how easy it is to change uh, to a different use case. So we are going to uh, supply the VPP with another P4 file. Okay, so now we are going to launch the VPP with uh, another P4 file, okay. So it is repeating the same process. It has uh, compiled the P4, it has generated the bin file. Uh, just, just two more minutes. Yeah, yeah just, just one more minute. So the VPP has uh, started up and uh, 
Let's insert the rules. So this is the rules uh, we are going to insert. So this time the key are the TAD fields. And we are saying that for each of the TAD values, it has to send to two different ports. So here we can see that uh, the packets, the, the GTPU packets that were sent. So one was uh, with one TAD, one of the TADs, and one was the other TAD. So they have been each switched to the different interfaces. So this is just to see that uh, the, which of the rules have been hit by the packet. So here we installed two rules to switch uh, based on the TID, so we can see that uh, the packets are with each of those rules. Okay, so uh, what this demonstration showed is, uh, given the same soft switch, uh, we could uh, just load different P4 and go from a VLAN switch implementation to a UPF implementation, right? So that shows the immense possibilities uh, that uh, P4 offers us. Uh, so I think that's all we have time for. So if you have some questions. Thank you. I think uh, so we're a little short on time. So we'll hold the questions for the, uh, we'll take one question and then we'll uh, hold the other questions for the Q&A. So thanks so much for the demo. <clears throat> um, appreciate it. The, um, I, I just checked the re repo and the repo is empty. The P4 VPP. Are you looking to uh, push the code to the repo? Currently, uh, we are uh, still developing it. So our PLM has not made, made a decision about pushing this into the open source or not yet. When do you expect to be able to push the code to the repo? Uh, maybe in another uh, one or two months. In another one or two months. OK. So within the first quarter of next year, we should be OK. All right. You showed some numbers there. <clears throat> Can we go back to the numbers? And uh, just uh, so maybe we can take it actually offline as we're short of time. But uh, the numbers look indeed uh, inter interesting, and I like the wizard in the background. Um, so if the numbers are real, I um, would encourage once you push the code to the repo to also consider contributing and maybe taking part in the FDA assisted code where we can showcase this for real. Thank you. Uh, sure. yeah. Great. Thank you.